Um, Joshua and I have slowly become people that look like twins because our message is beginning to sound the same. And uh, today I'm going to say some. I'm going to say a few things that have gotten me into trouble before, but I am going to say them because I believe that they are very necessary, especially for the African farmer. And I'm going to reiterate more or less what it is that Joshua was saying. Minister, Governor, I believe that every economy starts with agriculture. You are never going to build anything, you are never going to invest anything, you are never going to be educated without agriculture. How did I learn what is it that I'm going to speak to you is important is that I live in South Africa. And the South Africans are running the threat that they will one day take their land but when they take their land, they'll have no seeds to put in that ground because the Europeans control all the seeds in South Africa. And so one day they'll take their land and then the Europeans will hold back the seeds and they'll have nothing to put in the ground. Then they have to go back and negotiate with the same people that they took the land from. I will leave that story and I'll tell you another story. There's a company called Lima Grain and unfortunately, or fortunately, Lima Grain controls a stake in Seedco. Lima Grain sells tomato seeds in Europe for between 60,000 euros to 40,000 euros a kg for hybrid seeds that they manufacture or, or, or grow in India and hybridize in India for 200 euros a kg. What am I saying to you? You're a gold uh, uh, producing country. The seeds for tomatoes in Europe are already selling for more than a kg of gold. Because the Europeans accepted and allowed for Lima, Lima grain to destroy the traditional tomato seeds by hybridizing them. And when they hybridized the seeds, the original heirloom seeds, the original OPV seeds were lost. And the moment they were lost, those people were what we call captives. In the same way that they sometimes capture us in Africa with debt. I am an anti-sanctions activist in an organization called Zimbabwe Anti-Sanctions Movement and we are fighting the captivity of the banking system by the Americans. And while we are fighting that, we as a people are slowly being captured in the most important way where they are going to control our seeds. And they will release the banking system and allow us to do whatever we want but then we have to buy maize seeds for 60,000 euros a kg. So you, the farmers, you are the custodians of the most important resource that we have. That is the human being by the food that he eats. And the food that he eats is the seed that you guys hold. And I want to challenge you and say to you, if today no one sells you seeds and you can't farm, then you need to start asking yourself, are you a farmer? Because if you don't control the seed, if you don't improve the seed, if you don't adapt the seed to the changing environment, you are not a farmer. The farmer is the owner of the seed. The farmer is the improver of the seed. The farmer is the improver of our health care. The farmer is our pharmacy and our doctor. Yes, so before I leave here today, Before I leave here today, I want to challenge you that you need to start learning the seed, the, 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 the science of controlling your seeds, owning the seed, improving the seed and adapting it. But more critically, you're also the custodian of the soil. Too many times since the European came, they've been defiling the soil. They've been polluting the soil, polluting the water system. They've been defecating where we eat. They've been defecating in the water. That is not our culture. How are they defecating in the water? They are putting cyanide in the water when they mine. When they farm, they put chemicals into the water and the ground. It kills the nematodes. It kills the uh, soil life. And when you know that the soil is where the ingredients that make Zimbabwe's food special, the taste that everybody talks about, the taste that we come back from and we, we say that in England the food is tasteless, in South Africa the food is tasteless, in America it is because they've destroyed the soil. So you be custodians of that soil. 
be custodians of the water table, be custodians of our rivers. How do you do that? You have to decolonize the farming by taking out the chemicals from the farming. We have got something that we call Mfuza in Zimbabwe. Murakan. Murakan. You are able to utilize what nature created to create fertility and life in your soil. So that when you go into organic farming, you are able to produce food that has got life, but food that has got longevity, and you are actually be able to produce more over time because your soils are living. So this is what I want to leave with you. Your seeds are important. And I want to say that those that work in the biotech companies, it is your job to ensure that your biotech company is leaving a legacy and heritage for Zimbabwean children by leaving our seeds intact and increasing the number of seeds that we have and varieties that we have for biodiversity instead of destroying them by hybridization and GMOs so that at the end of the day, we actually do not have seeds. Another point I need to make before I leave is that there is a gentleman in California who's been researching the nutritional value of these hybrids. And what he discovered is that not only are hybrids an economic weapon because they do not produce true and ultimately they will eventually not produce, so you have to continue buying seeds. They actually discovered that sometimes they have up to 80% less nutritional value. 80% less antioxidants, 80% less vitamins. So what is this food that we're eating with reduced nutrition? It is part and parcel of why we've got health issues. Because when we eat, we are no longer eating for nutritional value to improve our body. So I've heard a lot of scientists when I speak like this, they say, but you don't know the science. And I say that when you take a cow that produces one calf, in its life and that produces no calves in its life just because it's fat does that make you productive compared to the guy who's got a skinny cow that will continue to reproduce for a lifetime and produce offspring that will reproduce for a lifetime the hybrids that we get don't reproduce for a lifetime the opvs that you have produce for a lifetime and they give better yes. nutrition that's your bank so i'm challenging you i have stopped eating white maize I eat millet. I even import my millet from Zimbabwe to South Africa to eat it there. My rapoko, my um, mupunga, which is African rice that we have here in Zimbabwe. And my health has improved. But not only that, I'm refusing to support the colonialism of our seeds and the dependency that is being created there. And this shouldn't be done by me, but it should be done by you, the farmer. If you refuse, seeds that cannot reproduce and force seed companies to look for other revenue streams instead of trying to make you a captive you will improve the agricultural system of this country and meaning i appeal to you that this is something that we need to ensure that our seed bank is ours yes, full of seeds that reproduce and our soils must become more fertile by coming up with less fertilizers less chemicals and using organic fertilizers that is full in our in our caves i'm giving away a secret there's something called bat manure or bat guano it's full in our caves here and that fertilizer not only works as a fertilizer but as a pesticide because there are nematodes and living organisms there that are going to be parasites upon some of what you're calling your infectious diseases and your uh, pests on your plants lastly Another thing is I watched a video from America where a white gentleman was showing off Mashona cows. He says, these Mashona cows are the most hardiest cows in the world. They are the best cows you can ever have. And what they do is they eat quickly and store the food in their stomachs. So that even when you've got problems with droughts, they're not grazing the whole day. I, 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 was, I was flabbergasted. Because we are getting rid of Mashona cows, Matebele cows in Zimbabwe by hybridizing them with breeds that are not even adapted to the diseases in this part of the world. They are not adapted to the grazing styles that are required in a savanna that is prone to climate change. Guys, come on. We have to go backwards, not forwards. Back to the way our ancestors did it. Because our ancestors, even when they were inside what were called reserves, they fed the guerrillas. 
these reserves that were barren, these, these reserves that could not produce food, they fed the guerrillas to defeat Smith, even though he created keeps so that they would not be able to feed the guerrillas. Ask yourself if our ancestors could feed the guerrillas from reserves, then what can you do with the fertile lands that we've been given in the land reform program? Let us change the way we do things. And anybody who argues and says, ah, ask yourself, I not tell I want you to tell me the forest that you see feeding millions and billions and trillions of animals every day. Who is farming this? Who is plowing the land? Who is putting fertilizers? Who is hybridizing them? But why do they keep producing and sometimes you fail to produce as a farmer? It is because nature has the secret. And I am done. I want to say thank you so much for the opportunity that you've given us. Let's be colonized. Ah.